A wise man once said that the ultimate goal of farming is not the growing of crops, but the cultivation and perfection of human beings. Good morning, everyone. I'm Arturo Mayorga, and today I will talk to you about how biofortification is an important part of nutrition-sensitive agriculture. Let me start by telling you that under nutrition, understood as an insufficient intake of energy and nutrients, affects almost 40% of the global population. There are 2 billion people that suffer from micronutrient deficiencies, also known as hidden hunger. And since agriculture is the main occupation of 80% of rural populations, it has been suggested as a solution to undernutrition. In the past, agriculture was focused on producing calorically dense staple crops, such as wheat, corn, and rice, rather than on the production of vegetables, pulses, and animal products that offer high contents of micronutrients such as vitamins, minerals, and essential amino acids. Over the last decade, however, efforts to design agriculture to make it more nutritious has become a priority. Now we have nutrition-sensitive agriculture. An NSA refers to an approach that seeks to produce in a sustainable manner a variety of affordable, nutritious, culturally appropriate, and safe foods in sufficient quantity to meet the dietary requirements of populations. Here we see the different pathways through which one can attempt to improve the nutritional status of a community. For example, increased production of biofortified crops might have an impact on food access to improve the dietary quality and eventually the nutritional status. Now, biofortification is a process through which the density of vitamins and minerals in a crop is increased. Plant breeding, agronomic, and transgenic practices are the techniques through which biofortification can be accomplished. More than 20 billion people grow and consume biofortified crops, and to integrate biofortification in public and private programs is necessary to reach scale. Uh, it has been reported that low- and middle-income settings lead to different forms of malnutrition. Therefore, as we see in this map, Biofortified crops have been released or are being tested mostly in low- and middle-income countries. Iodine deficiencies can lead to thyroid enlargement and goiter, and CACMAC and others prove that foliar fertilization of wheat might be adequate to tackle iodine deficiencies in populations that have an intake of wheat-based foods that goes from moderate to high. Another example is a study conducted in Rwanda in which it was shown that the consumption of beans biofortified with iron improved the iron status in women after 128 days. Another undernutrition problem is the vitamin A deficiency, which affects 30% of children under 5 years of age in the world. And an intervention in which orange sweet potato was biofortified with beta-carotene reached 24,000 households in Uganda and Mozambique and intakes of sweet potato were associated with improved vitamin A status among women and children. So consumption of biofortified crops is helpful to increase dietary micronutrient adequacy by replacing a micronutrient-poor staple with its micronutrient-rich counterpart. However, the production of biofortified crops alone does not guarantee improvements in the nutritional status. We see here that by increasing biofortified crops, we only have an impact on food access. But what happens if we combine biofortification with other types of intervention? For instance, if we design a program of nutrition education and behavior change communication, we can have an impact on care practices too. And impacts on both food access and care practices have better chances to improve diet and eventually nutritional status. To conclude, Agriculture has relied heavily on the production of staple crops that led to deficiencies of certain micronutrients in populations. And in the past decade, uh, it has become a priority to design agriculture in such a way to make it more nutritious. And this is how nutrition-sensitive agriculture was coined. Biofortification is an example of an NSA intervention. However, it should be combined with other types of interventions, such as nutrition education, to assure improvements in the nutritional status of the targeted populations. Now, these are my references, and thank you very much. Do you have any questions?